I'm Jonathan Hochberg, Finger Lakes Music Press. I'm here with Jones Benali, the family of uh, dancers and drummers who have been at every grassroots festival since the uh, very beginning back in 1992 here in Trumansburg. Start with the patriarch, Jones Benali. You've been at every grassroots festival. How did you get started here? Well, this long says story. I'm Jones Benalis, and uh, I'm from uh, Northern Arizona, uh, Navajo Nation. Um, I guess the, the people, uh, like, they talk about here, the grassroots. What we care on in history, back in the beginning, long time, and everybody's the same way, traditional way, our life is more important communicate with the other people, no matter how far you can meet some good, nice people. That's why we end up here, we got to know some people. And also my wife is uh, promote to, to with the, the other people festival. So, uh, so because uh, we share our cultures to let them know what we still care on and uh, to share with the other people, the more communicate with them. This is all about in this world, because in the beginning, we all are brother and sister. Now, when, we, when you were on stage before, you talked about this festival as being very much like the powwows, the, the cultural gatherings that were of more traditional nature. Why don't you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about, the traditional way, you know, like get together for friendly or uh, something that, uh, like festival. So uh, that's why we, like power, we get together, we camp out around there, and so we ride there for, we in, enjoy whatever we do, dance, and then and, and now it's the, uh, it changed at the power. A lot of them, they go, you know, go to a motel and they stay over there. That time was to come in and like here, you know, like old traditional way, what we used to do. They come out around here, just like big family back together. And then what, that's what we should be, you know, for really uh, traditional way we share one another. And uh, that's that's what we need. Also, a lot of musicians, and uh, like I say, drum beat, earth beat, a drum. So this is uh, everybody has it. Our heart, our heartbeat is the same. So uh, we come back together. We share our cultures. Or musicians, the same way they play what they learn, mm -hmm. and they share with the other people. So uh, the sun never die. They continue to pass on and something that you worry about it. You seen the sun, you open your, your mind. So that's why a lot of people, musicians, they, they create uh, as sign writers, you know, because the, and it's like newspaper, you know, you put up, you know, like uh, our culture is the same way we share all about it. That's why we're here. So uh, that actually segues very nicely because, uh, so Clayson, you, w the first time you were here, you were a teenager and uh, you have your own band uh, with your sister, Sehasen, which means hope, hope. What was it like growing up with, with this as a, a regular traditional part of your life? I think we're very blessed. I don't know if we've been here for every grassroots. I know some some summers we'd actually be on tour. We'd be in Europe, and I'm trying to remember the the whole entire history of how we got connected. But as being a an educator and sharing our culture, I wouldn't necessarily always consider it being a performer and entertainer because a lot of our, our traditional dances it's something that's ceremonial in nature, and when we share it, it's. It's something that, for us, it's an oral tradition, and in order to ensure the survival of our culture, you know, and to carry on, this is kind of one of the, the forms, best forms of communication to let people know that, hey, first and foremost, as Native Americans, we are still alive, we have our culture, it's rich and beautiful. So when I started coming to Grassroots and 
sharing our culture and playing music, you know, you connect, you know, we're from the, the west, southwest out in Arizona, and to see the world, to have so many artists, you know, and watch other artists grow, their families, you know, have Cage and Zydeco, um, everything that you can imagine kind of represented here, you know, truly the world, you know. I think, you know, a lot of people think world music is just one small, tiny classification of, of music or a genre, but with our newest sound, with Sea Hassan, you know, it kind of falls into that, <laughs> it's kind of funny that we, we fall into that world music as well, you know, Navajo punk rock, sure. and we get to travel and see the world and, and really experience so many cultures throughout the world and compare and see what's happening in their communities, how they're bringing communities together to heal, to, to learn, to understand either if there's environmental issues that we're facing or if there's different challenges. When you bring people together at a festival like this and there's so much love and support, the things that you can create and generate, you know, it's amazing. And to, to just be a youth, to come here, to be able to express myself um, throughout all the years and see the transformation and be part of this family. That's what I, I, I feel like I'm at home when I come here. So that actually segues nicely. This festival started dedicated towards the support of the fight against AIDS, but it has expanded over the years to take on a, a, an environmental uh, perspective uh, with the expansion of grassroots into the big splash project protecting the water supply, the water table here in New York State. You guys have had a, a, a pretty fundamental battle of your own on environmental issues. Why don't we talk about that for a second and Janeta, why don't you kick us off? So my brother, my mother, and I um, all sued the United States federal government, the Forest Service, in an effort to protect youth and to protect people from the harmful contaminants of reclaimed wastewater and the endocrine disruptors, the hormones, the steroids, all of the things that get into reclaimed wastewater that aren't tested for. And um, basically the Forest Service and a small for-profit ski business decided that they wanted to use reclaimed wastewater on the side of a mountain that's holy to 13 tribal nations. Regardless of what the health effects would be, uh, be putting this water, this untested water, at the top of our watershed and allowing for children to play in it. And I, you know, I'm a snowboarder and I know that when, when I face plant, I eat snow. And I don't want for any child to be the guinea pig uh, of uh, face planting, of, of ingesting and taking reclaimed wastewater snow. Sure. Now, um, to put this back into the grassroots perspective, um, do you feel like you've had um, a receptive audience to the, when you perform, I know that you deliver your, your environmental uh, promotional message in your, in your, uh, as part of your uh, production. Do you feel like you're reaching a receptive crowd here? Absolutely. I feel like the grassroots crowd, the grassroots family is absolutely receptive to to being a part of a conscious growing movement. I mean, this is one of the greenest festivals in all of America. You've got compost, you've got recycling happening. You've got, um, you know, you've got people that are really aware. You've got watering stations where you don't have to buy a a plastic bottle. You don't have to buy something, you, you know, in order to to take care of yourself in order to have water. And so I think that grassroots, the grassroots audience is an incredible audience. You know, it's a growing movement. I was talking with some people that came from California and they were just blown away at just the level of composting, just the, the awareness, the recycling, everything that has made this festival what it is today and it, it was small steps you know and now you see how Ithaca and the surrounding communities have you know incorporated composting completely into their waste man management policy and it's it's brilliant you know that's what needs to happen on a national scale so by creating a role model creating a, a 
completely existing paradigm that is functional and sustainable and can house and, and deal with you know the, the waste that's generated from a festival like this and turn it into something that's so positive and healthy for your community and for your, from your farm and to probably even eat vegetables that are produced at a farm that was you know made from a plate or some materials that I threw away in the compost here you know that's it's it's happening it's it's a reality now it's not just some dream or vision now we just need to take this model and apply it at other festivals other communities and it starts the trickle effect you're you're now an actress um, in a in a film called sixth world tell me briefly about that before the music starts so the sixth world is a fantastic film written and directed by a Diné Navajo woman uh, named Nanaba Becker and she's incredible but the sixth world is really about it's like Navajo Diné science fiction and it's it's challenging the modern concepts of how how can you take one portion of a plant how can you take one part of a seed how can you take one tiny part of this glorious thing that mother earth has made and change it and manipulate it to to sustain life and you clearly can't you know and we see that with the gmo foods and such and so this is a fun science fiction uh, that kind of um, talks about going into the next world that you know we've destroyed so many of our worlds that pretty soon we, we might have to find a new world and hopefully that's not the case you know but but we're in the we're in the fifth world now and this is talking world. oh we're in the fourth world now okay and this is talking about so two cycles down the road. Yeah, sci-fi, yes. you know. Right, sure. Yeah. Right. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. No, but, uh, hopefully not. Um, my sister was also recently at uh, in D.C. with Michelle Obama. Some amazing developments. My father was recognized as an Arizona living Indian treasure. And um, my recently. brother's been in a lot of films, too. And he's, you know, and he's gained a lot of national in attention and media because he's an amazing horse yeah. whisperer. A few uh, articles, you know, for me, just bringing attention to the wild horses that are in Arizona that were being rounded up and unfortunately sent to slaughterhouses. You know, this is part of our, our traditional bank system, our economy, and for them to round up and slaughter our horses was, you know, outrageous. So just one small way of bringing attention to to the situation. Sihasin. S i h a s i n dot com, and we're on Facebook. And yeah, and, and you know, I want to invite people to come out to the largest, most incredible family reunion ever, because this is a family of good-hearted, conscious people. And so, I hope that that ripple effect finds everyone in the world, because we all need that positive change. I'm Jonathan Hochberg with Finger Lakes Music Press, and we're very, very happy to have the Jones Benali family with us for the 25th Annual Grassroots Festival of Musical and Dance in Truman's Brew, New York. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. It's really, really, really very, very special.